so no financial interest up till now. I'm, I'm, I'm the first, not the very first one to have, but I'm still the first one to have the MS39 in my clinic. After doing a lot of papers and research about this device, to show that how uh, great uh, it is. Uh, MS39 complementary components like combo, uh, both OCT-based tomography, uh, which is the spectral domain OCT, with placido desk, which uh, uh, offers you a sensitive and accurate uh, topography plus a more accurate uh, tomography uh, <coughs> regarding uh, in comparison with the Shane Flight camera, which is which is affected by the dry spots and also the, f the very faint coronal opacities. But the, the OCT-based tomography is not affected at all by the dry spots or the coronal opacities. We have a lot of new tools to diagnose coronus, artificial intelligence, the problems, you know all about it, the, the bad and the bad, the, also the spelling uh, grading for the coronas, also the cord uh, uh, displayed and shown very um, uh, in details by my dear colleague Dr. Tarek. And finally, the epithelial mapping, which is offered by the OCT, which is included in this device. So uh, we, we, we need a lot of time to, to talk about the all technologies and all the options in this device, but I will focus today about the epithelial mapping. And we'll show it simply how to read the epithelial mapping, how uh, does it uh, help you to diagnose, or to include or to exclude your case, so it will change the map, in my opinion. Let's talk about the epithelial behavior, <coughs> which, is, which was uh, shown by the Tangrich time. The, the normal epithelium looks as you see here, the normal, and uh, as I believe, that the current coronary set of posterior disease, though the forward movement of the back of the cornea won't be shown directly on the surface because of the masking effect of the epithelial thinning, which happens on the top of the cone, forming this thinning, which is surrounded by a thickening <coughs> around. So this thinning will compensate for the protrusion of the stromal, uh, 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 for the stromal surface. So it will, it will, it won't be detected by the topography at the start. So uh, this is an example for uh, a normal epithelial map where the epithelial thickness is homogeneous all around, especially in the center part of the cornea. <coughs> Almost equal thicknesses all around the central area. Normally, epithelium is thicker in center than in the periphery, which is the reverse of the of the corneal thickness uh, uh, as well. So look here, uh, the abnormal maps. The most important one is this sign, is the German <coughs> sign formation, <coughs> which is an uh, uh, alarming sign for, for us. The donut means thinning island surrounded by thickening around, like the island and the borders of the island. And not just thinning with homogeneous epithelium around, but be characteristic uh, sign should be thinning surrounded by uh, a border of thickening. So the thinning is surrounded by thickening, a sign of the occurrence if coincides with the thinnest location in the pachymetry map, or to the steepening of the anterior curvature map, and finally the high points of the elevation either anterior or posterior, but most important in the posterior uh, uh, elevation uh, points. This is the carpeting sign. It's a good sign. Uh, despite its spread, but it's a good sign, which is the thickening of the epithelium all over the steepening part. Thickening of epithelium thickness will be very significant and assuring sign. If it coincide, if it's coinciding to a steep area in topography, also coinciding to the thinnest location in the pachymetry map. Also, in cases of regaining errors after laser vision correction, as I will show later. So, here the key to, to, to feel comfortable with your decision about the, your case. If you have a thin map, you have to look carefully to the points of the other curvatures and correlate all of them to the epithelial map uh, for this cornea. If there is a thinning, a significant thinning 
on top of the on the same point of the uh, uh, curvature, uh, sorry, of the steepening of the anterior curvature, or suspicious points in the back of the cornea, and especially the posterior curvature map, which is more significant in diagnosis than the posterior elevation now. I'm, I'm, relying, I'm relying on the back curvature more than the back elevation and also the anterior curvature to diagnose or to suspect the coronis in these patients, believing and all the time that the posterior, the coronis is a posterior disease. <coughs> so we we'll ask the, 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 the question again, does it change the map? <coughs> Normally, in your, in, your, in your refractive day, you may go for trans PRK. So it's very crucial to measure the epithelial thickness, so away from the calculus diagnosis. The epithelial mapping will help you to define the epithelial thickness uh, you have to, to put on your machine to get an accurate ablation. Because we, we were putting it randomly as 50 micrometer, which is not the same in all patients, so we got Overcorrection or undercorrection <coughs> if going for trans PRK without measuring the epithelial thickness. So it will help you to define the epithelial thickness. Remove uh, should be removed by the PTK technique on your uh, laser machine. Then the accurate diagnosis, which will make you confident uh, in your decision, and it will it will offer you a, an honest guide <coughs> for your patients. Let's start. Start with this example. We were talking about Pentacam and the MS theta line. In this patient, I will show uh, very quickly with the difference between both machines. Well, what about this patient and this Pentacam, uh, Dr. Mazin? Please. Uh, what about this patient? Your opinion? Um, the asymmetry is about 1.3. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes, you have used as well the, the, the scale of 0 0.25, that's why showing uh, noisy, and uh, the thickness is fine. Yes. Everything is fine. Is, is it correct? No, it is not. Is it correct? suspect? No. Mm -hmm. For me, no. Now, it's the pain in the prosium. What about it? Um, <coughs> the slope is, is fine, but uh, the average is uh, borderline. Okay. Yes. Until now, you are comfortable with your case to go for refractive surgery or not? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I, I don't go uh, for LASIK. Uh, I go for PRK yeah. because the average is borderline. But we, when we see the, the epithelial mapping for this patient, you will find a surprise. There is uh -huh. epithelial thinning with no mm -hmm. obvious signs of the pentacle. Mm -hmm. yes. So this, this is an example how this machine or, or epithelial mapping itself can yes. help to, to, sure. to execute. Thank you, sir. And uh, is there any dry eye? No. Uh, contact lenses? Repeated many times with no, with no contact lenses work at all. Very good. Thank you so much. Let's continue. <coughs> so the roadmap. Can I ask the question? Yeah. Did you do a scan with a different tomographer? So on the Pentagon, for example, also the MS-39, did it show normal also in the other tomographer, if you did? No, I, I, I did this patient on on the Pentacam oh, yes. and on the MS39. Ah, okay, so yeah. the MS39, regardless of the epithelial map, which was very, very indicating, the, the cartogonous indexes of yes. the MS39, what did they say? A classification. The, the, yeah. The, yeah. The, uh, this patient on the classification by the MS39 <coughs> is an uh, absolute cartogonous. Oh, ah, true scan. So there is a yeah. discrepancy between. Pen okay, this is very yes. interesting then. Yes. So there is a cartogonic patient. With, with no option for refractive surgery, just for cross linking answer. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I would be thankful to see the, um, the keratoconus report from the NS39 to know why they classified it as keratoconus. Yeah. Because there are some indices to see. <coughs> Accordingly, I can tell you whether this machine has classified correctly or there was maybe uh, artifacts. For this patient, or yeah, for, for this one. For this one, okay. Yes. We can we can uh, find it on the yeah. my laptop later. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. So the roadmap for uh, for uh, for all of us regarding the field mapping to stop, <coughs> to wait, or to go. 
same way by this. Uh, uh, if you have this topography with this inferior steamening, so you will define, you will you will study here the epithelial mapping to know this this is as significant in steamening or just surface change or hyperplasia of this epithelium. So if it's blue, which means thinning, you have to stop. If it's just green but with somewhat dark color, which is with, with no significant differences between the epithelium uh, in this point or in the surrounding points, you have to wait to follow up. Not don't <coughs> go please, but if you have thickening, which is red sign, you you can go comfortably with no problem at all. Let's go directly for the clinical cases from uh, uh, our center to know how we, we dealt with. Uh, here's one, do you feel safe to do laser beta correction or not in this patient with Tartaric? This is cornea thickness, it's a thin cornea, the thinnest is around 46, <coughs> 460 microns with a little bit of superior stiffness and discrepancy. Does it have any sort of opacity in the superior area? No, just fineness. Just just some fineness. hypertrophy of the epithelium. Some, but it's not. Yeah, this patient ha has uh, just balance, extensive balance in the superior cornea. Mm -hmm. But do you believe in the superior crack or not? Uh, very rare. I don't diagnose it except uh, I have uh, clear evidence that this is a superior keratoconus, but it's, it does exist, but it's not that common. It's very rare. Yeah. Yes, okay. What about the back, the, the curvature map? <coughs> the tangential positive it's, curvature? It's good. It's good. The, the elevation maps are not bad oh. here. Okay, the, uh, also the posterior elevation mm -hmm. points looks normal. Yeah. And finally, the epithelial thickness. Look at, bad, the, yeah. look at the epithelial thickness. There's no, there's no thinning in the center. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> it's a very thin cornea. Yeah, this is a thing. Yeah. The central part of the cornea, uh, epithelial thickness is 54 and 55, and surrounding is around 57, 56, which is, which is good. Yeah. Which is, uh, there's, there's no problem uh, regarding the epithelial map. It could be a normal thin cornea. Yeah, it could be. But, but it's not keratoconic for me. Okay, but look, look at the superior point here. The, the superior steepening with the superior... But you mentioned there is a superior pans. Yeah. This could be an so effect there, of the pans. So I mean there is thickening here at the steep point of the superior cornea. So it's not thinning. Yeah. Yes, yes sir. Let please. me comment on this, please. Uh, first of all, uh, <coughs> this is not the effect of the superior pans. Because if it was because of the superior pans, we should have seen that also on the anterior elevation. We see that the anterior elevation is very symmetric. Now, this is because of the effect of the upper lip. lip. Upper lip and the tear film, uh, which is, or the, the tear meniscus, correlated <coughs> with the tear film. That's why this is an artifact, especially it is the tangential anterior curvature that shows the K-max in this position, so this is an artifact. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. This is the, the main cause for this peer stimming. So I asked the operator to open, to help patient to open the lid, uh, the lid uh, properly. And so the, the, uh, this the map disappeared. totally changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the theater map helped you in this patient or not? Yes, yes, of course. This is the, uh, the, another case. How do you see it? This patient with inferior steepening. The, the, the superior inferior point difference is um, <coughs> 1.2. No, no, 2.2. <coughs> so it's highly significant, especially in the center part of the cornea. And, and could be um, yeah, highly suspicious for this vision. Please, can I have uh, another uh, 10 minutes? Yes. Thank you so much. So, if you, if you uh, have this topography, 
You have to suspect. Yeah. 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 You have to suspect this patient with this, especially <coughs> it's central. It's not in, in the center five or center eight millimeter. But look here at the anterior elevation is good and the posterior elevation is good. The back curvature here is steep inferiorly, yes. right? Yeah. What about the epithelial mapping? If you don't have all these, you can look here. You will find this 61 above and 55 below. So it's going to be thinner than the superior point. So the back curvature, the, back, the posterior tangential curvature is steep. Anterior curvature is steep. Thin epithelium in the same point. Even if we, if I have normal posterior elevation, I don't <coughs> rely on the posterior elevation all the time. If you, I have the other, the posterior curvature map and the epithelial thickness. So this patient for me is scratoconic, and I will uh, go for treatment of the cracks. I agree with you. Uh, by the way, the posterior elevation is not normal. By the way. It, it is, uh, uh, oh, by the way, if it is, if it is, uh, or if it was, by the pentacam, this is tongue-like <coughs> extension, which doesn't make any sense because uh, if it is the best fit sphere, because we look at the thinnest location. And I have many cases of tongue-like extension which are normal cases. Yes. But in the CSO, uh, the system is different because it, uh, it depends on the best fit, uh, something uh, aspheric, so like the this, this tongue uh, like extension is an indicator of an asymmetry. Tongue like extension is an indicator of asymmetry on the posterior surface. So, yes, it is. Uh, I, I can consider it as I, I have a comment on this because this is a personal finding, but take it into consideration. There is a difference between um, mechanical aphasia and the cradle. And I have seen cases like this, especially with eye rubbing, because the tongue-like extension, usually from the temporal side, yes. where the, the, the patient rubbed his eye. And the configuration of the skew deviation is some sort of skewing also. Yes. And uh, the configuration is not classic for cratoconus or the, or the genetically induced cratoconus. So it could be a, a rubbing-induced ectasia <coughs> which we can call it cratoconus, of course, but still there is a distinction between both entities, yeah. especially because if we stop rubbing the eye, but we but might but improve the rubbing, without... But the rubbing usually affects the anterior surface more than the posterior surface, I, I, I think. Both, so. I but, think but, so. but this tongue, I have seen it a lot in, in, uh, with the history of eye rubbing, yes. and it, it looks like it's yeah. from the temporal side, and it, 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 it is with the, with the movement of the rubbing itself. But just to find that the epithelial mapping, uh, the minute finished in the chat discussion, mm -hmm. uh, so the epithelial mapping, the epithelial mapping, it will be thicker in the case of of, of rubbing, not not thinned. Mm -hmm. Like that, the contact lens, the contact lens warpage. Why? Explain be be because there is a mechanical warping. Uh, uh, well, uh, you can you can say that if there is punctate erosions in the cornea uh, because of the rubbing itself, uh, this will be misinterpreted by the machines as hotspot and uh, uh, epithelial hypertrophy. But if the <coughs> cornea is totally clear without punctate erosions, uh, still the same. It should be hypertrophy no. after because of rubbing. No. rubbing. Thank you. Uh, I will finish in just a minute. Discussion. We'll give you five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. You are generous to talk. You give me back the four minutes. Uh, case three, epithelium does a great job in such case because I, when I when I saw this case, I, will I, I found that there is deviation, significant uh, deviation with thinning. Epithelium thickness is uh, much like thin. The back is also steep. Also, the anterior surface. Is steep. So uh, I, I, I feel uh, suspicious for this patient. I'm excluded this patient from refractive surgery. More and more, we have a lot of cases, but the time is too tight. So 
if you have this case finally to do a laser vision correction or not, I will answer. This is the right eye and this is the left eye with inferior steaming, very significant inferior steaming in the topography. But when I went for this uh, this patient, I found I, the other eye for this patient, I found uh, this map with highly, highly significant or highly steepening uh, uh, inferior surface of the cornea with very normal back curvature. So, but the epithelium is uh, thickening. The epithelium is thickening. thickening yes. So I will be comfortable for this patient despite this high, yeah. highly significant or high steepening of the anterior surface. Uh, let's go for the next, the same. Finally, what about the post-LASIK? How, how, how uh, does a uh, 39 help you in post-LASIK? If, if you have patients with regression or uh, a residual error after LASIK, you, are, you will be suspicious about the ectasia or not, and also the cause of uh, the, this residual error. Finally, if you have epithelial mapping, you will, you will know the cause. Actually, if you, if you found epithelial hyperplasia at the bleated part, you will rely this residual error to this epithelial hyperplasia and you will manage it by removal of the epithelium by the PRK on the flap and, and doing on, on all cases of redo uh, with mitomycin for uh, uh, up to one minute, which will decrease the epithelial hyperplasia with uh, a stable refraction for a very long time after that. Another case, six years post LASIK. Uh, with minus 4.5 cylinder uh, sphere and minus 1.5 cylinder OU, does the epithelial mapping help in decision? Yes, as I said, there is the epithelial uh, thickness is 74 microns, but around is 40, 60, 61, and so. So, this is the main cause of residual error in this patient, with which is the epithelial hyperplasia, especially with the high myopic patients. Uh, Preoperatively, yes, depending on what do you want to say. Yeah, so do you overcorrect or undercorrect in this case? In this patient? Yeah. According to the follow up time, if this patient is stable for a long time on this uh, refraction, I will, I will be uh, full, full, uh, fully corrected. Yeah, well, why I mean that? Because you, you see there is a central island of epithelial thickness. Yeah. So the profile uh, of the myopic treatment is to flatten. This. So, in this case, it will reach the periphery, periphery of the stroma yeah. before reaching the center of the stroma. Yes. So it will start doing an effect of hyperopic treatment. Yeah. Okay, so this will reduce the myopic treatment that you are going to do. So you have to overcorrect. In such case, you have to add 0.5 diopters to the sphere in order to fully correct. Yeah, this depends upon the expansion of the epithelial hyperplasia. Yeah, uh, it depends, yeah. of course, on the optical zone that you are going to treat. But yeah. uh, here, the optical zone uh, is around 5.6 6 millimeter. Yeah, but I mean the spot of the epithelial thickness. Yeah, th thickening the her, her, six millimeter. Yeah, around six millimeter. So if you are going to treat only six millimeter only, yes. okay, uh, that's fine. You can use this. But if you are going to go out 6.5 or 6.7, yeah. you are going to reach the periphery before. So this will uh, give some hyperopic effect, which will reduce your my myopic treatment. So you have to overcorrect. It's a and very good tip. It's very good tip. Thank you so yes. much, sir. Uh, early diagnosis of post lasik TGF, the same thing for the back curvature. And uh, I, I got all my minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so the epithelial mapping will differentiate, yeah, will differentiate between the TGF and the hyperplasia.